Carlina, to tell the people what's an EHS engineer. Hola, so my name is Paulina Castellon, and I attended Cal State University Northridge, aka CSUN, Go Matadors, where I got my degree in environmental occupational health, focused in industrial hygiene. I'm currently an environmental health and safety specialist working in aerospace here in Southern California. All right, so what made you jump into this field specifically? So it all started my sophomore year of college. I took an elective course, which was called EOH 101 which is Environmental Occupational Health and is pretty much the fundamentals of the major. I took the course and the professor that I had was Dr. Anthony Machado, I love that guy. He taught that class so amazing. I fell in love with his teaching skills and I fell in love with everything in that class. I learned that EOH was a combination of medicine and engineering put together. Now, originally I went to school for nothing related to STEM. I sucked, I sucked at math, I sucked at science. It wasn't something I really liked. I found it a struggle, but this field was something that really sparked an interest in me. So I thought, what's the worst that could happen? Let's well, switch. So right away I talked to the professor. I said, hey, how, what is this? How do you get a job? What kind of jobs can I get into this? And he talked to me, he said, hey, you know what? This is what you gotta do, go talk to your counselor. And funny story, at the time I had a high school boyfriend who was a civil engineer, looked to him for support, said, hey, how does this look? Mm -hmm. Right away he said, you can't do it. <laughs> oh. So that gave me even more oomph to be like, no, nah, I'm going to do it. Then I went to my family and my family was kind of like, oh, do you understand that you have to take calculus, ochems, thermo, physics, microbiology, like, as your GEs, all these main courses that, mind you, I said that I hated. So I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do it. I could do it. I could do it. I don't know how. I did it. I did it. And let me say, it kicked my butt. And I did not graduate in four years. It was definitely a little bit longer. But I did it. Once I conquered the GEs, which I'm sure many of you guys have struggled with those GEs because they can be challenging. Once I got to my upper division classes, I loved them. That's what I fell in love with. That was the core. That's what I wanted with those GEs. I don't know about you guys, but OCHEM I had to take twice. The first time was not fun, but the second time, Khan Academy, YouTube, sitting in the library, I taught myself those mechanisms, the molecules, and have to say I use it every day at work and I love it now. All right, so what would you say is the biggest benefit when it comes down to being into this field? So the biggest benefit for being into the field is the EOH community is fairly small. And one thing that I tell everybody in the EOH world, and I recommend it to anyone, is always be nice to everyone you meet. Because at the end of the day, people might, might not remember your name, but they're always going to remember how you make them feel. So one thing about the EOH community is we all know each other and we all are really close with each other and we share information. If we need help with something, we have the same lingo, we share notes and we network together. So I'm very fortunate where I've had opportunities to travel in different facilities and different um, careers in different states where I've been able to network in the Midwest, in the East Coast, Northern California, Southern California and utilize all of that on my LinkedIn and then real life when it comes to my job when I need advice, consultants, vendors. That networking and that family, that EOH family niche is what makes me so happy. For example, civil engineers, you all know each other. Chemies, you all know each other. Electrical, you all know each other. Same thing with EOH, we all know each other. All right, so what's something that you did not expect jumping into this field? So something that I did not expect going into this field and maybe just STEM in general, I knew that I was going to be probably the only woman in the room and I ended up finding out that I was always the youngest and the only Latina in every room that I was in, which wasn't a problem. However, I assumed that every woman would have my back, but that wasn't always the case. I've worked with a lot of women, probably uh, the old timers or those who have been in STEM for quite some time and actually saw me more as a threat. And weren't there to help me and weren't there to support me. So a lot of times it was just me, myself and I, and I had to learn to just kind of do it on my own. And I learned that sucks. And I always told myself at the end of the day, I'm not, I don't want to be that type of woman. And I definitely, if there's another woman that walks into the room or another person, a minority that walks into the room, I want to be that person to help them. And I want to be that person to have them come sit at the table, even if they have a than I do. I actually want to see more of me gente at the table and more people, minorities who sit at the table because having that, you know, being shunned out, not being invited
invited to sit in the cafeteria with the other women. It's called bullying. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that I was really shocked that that actually happened to me, but I'm glad that it did. It made me the person who I am today. All right, so touch on your side hustle. I know you mentioned consulting. Just give us a little insight on your whole side of the spectrum when it comes down to consulting and your consulting business that you're looking into getting into. Yeah, I'm so glad that you brought it up. So I've been in industry now. It's my fifth year. I definitely need a little bit more experience. I want to add that under my belt and I want to receive my certified safety professional and my certified industrial hygiene license. So once I get those two, it's done. But my ultimate dream job is to be a consultant. I want to be able to help other companies in different industries because now I've had that opportunity. I've worked in chemical, I've worked in pharmaceutical, I've worked in agricultural farming, I've worked in construction, I've worked in aerospace. There's still a lot more, I'm not done. So my job as a consultant is I want to be able to go to those companies and say, hey, how can I help you from an environmental health and safety standard? Maybe it's machine guarding, maybe it's lockout tagout, fall protection, construction management, environmental law. And not only do I want to do that, but I have a lot of quality under my belt. I've been involved with numerous different, numerous amount of audits, such as ISO 14,000, we have aerospace audits, pharmaceutical audits, and those are really, really, really important for big companies because big companies have certain certificates like ISO audits and more. That's something that I've actually specialized and done training in. So with my consulting business, stay tuned, still has a maybe a few more years, but I'm working on it. I want to improve in those documentations because documentation is key. I've always said, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. And at the end of the day, safety is number one. We want to make sure that we protect our employees from all hazards, from all safety related factors, but also make sure that we abide to the company policies and procedures. That's what I want to do. Improve your policies and procedures. Make it a safe environment for your company and make it an outstanding area so your company can receive all those certificates that they have at the front door when you walk in. All right, so tell the people about the EHS interview process. Like, how was the whole process when it comes to actually getting a job in this field? I'm so glad you asked. So, if you're interested in going into the environmental health and safety world, number one, do your homework. Go on YouTube, type in what is an industrial hygienist, type in what is an environmental health and safety specialist, or slide in my DM and feel free to ask me questions. I'll be more than happy to talk to you, text, DM, however. But it's very important to know when you're doing an interview process, I always recommend get some certifications. Like, number one, you can get an REHS, which stands for Registered Environmental Health and Safety Specialist. It's a great one to have in the state of California. Another one is a HAZWOPER. Pretty much a HAZWOPER, 40 hours, hazardous waste operation process and emergency responses, you know how to operate and delegate when there's an emergency spill on site. For example, if there's a spill, a chemical spill on my site, I'm out there with my PPE, my respirator, my Tycam, my walkie, and I'm delegating to my operators how to clean up, how to collect, how to uh, dispose of the material and make sure how to then report it to the following regulations for state, federal, and so on. And making sure again that my operators are safe. Having those certifications under your belt is a really big bump. Mind you, if you don't have it, it's still okay, but do your homework. But it never hurts to have more knowledge. Knowledge is power. All right, so jumping into you actually getting into the industry, do you have to have an EHS? type of major in order to get into this specific field? Actually, you don't. So, if you focus in environmental and occupational health and industrial hygiene, awesome, that's great, we speak the same lingo. However, on my team, I actually like to have diversity and it's actually helpful for my manufacturing site. So, I have a civil engineer, a structural engineer, a lean engineer, and a manufacturing engineer. So many of you who probably go into the STEM world, maybe you graduate civil engineer and you uh, find out you don't like it. Well, maybe you like a little bit more of design, maybe you like working in environmental, maybe you like being outside with facilities and actually doing some different type of work. Go into EOH, look it up. EOH will take anyone from different type of worlds with a science background. Keep that in mind. You can have biology, you can have neuroscience, you can have chemistry, you can have physics, you can be any sort of engineer, and you can go in the world of EOH, EH&S. However, it is way helpful if you have an environmental, occupational health, and industrial hygiene, but it's not limited. 
again, you can always sit at our table. We always welcome it. <laughs> okay, so if the people didn't take anything from this interview, what's one thing that you would just really want to leave them with? So something that's really important to my heart and I hope everyone um, takes this is number one, don't change. Don't change who you are. Whoever you are, when you go into every interview, be yourself. When you start work, be yourself. And that means if you want to wear a pink jacket, wear the pink jacket. If you want to have color hair, wear color hair. I understand some companies have dress codes, so buy by the dress codes by all means. But don't change yourself. I myself, I talk in Spanglish. It's who I am. Some people don't like it. Some people have words for it. But at the end of the day, it's who I am. And when you're yourself, people like that. People like real. Be yourself and don't ever change for anybody because when you're yourself, you are going to be thriving. You are going to be your best and you're going to be able to do so much work and you're just going to keep going and going and going. Don't change. Don't let the haters hate. Do you and be you and just be yourself. Okay, so tell the people your Instagram, any other social platform you may want them to know if they want to reach out to you and get more information about this specific topic. Yeah, so you can reach me at Paulina Castrillon and my Instagram name title will be attached here. And definitely check out my Instagram and stay tuned because I'm working on something special in the future so you can get some information. And if you have any questions in related to environmental, occupational health and industrial hygiene, Feel, feel free to reach out and I'm more than happy to help. And that concludes this video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. It really do help my channel when it comes down to the YouTube algorithm. If you guys have any questions regarding anything, just hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on the gram at Dre the Plug, one, two, three. And then also go check out my other YouTube channel. This is actually my second channel. My first one was called Andre classic cuts i basically go in and give tutorials about all types of different haircuts i actually show people how to do different type of things with the clippers that has never been done and i pretty much go into detail as to why certain things happen so definitely go check out that channel besides that be on the lookout for my next content that's dropping be on the lookout for it because it's coming real soon and i'm out